So let us start at the very beginning of the prostaglandin synthesis. That is from the cell membrane. The cell membrane is a phospholipid bilayer with hydrophilic heads and hydrophobic tails, integral proteins, various polysaccharides and lipoproteins. Prostaglandin synthesis begins by a specific enzyme phospholipase A2. Phospholipase A2 acts on the cell membrane and cleaves out a semi-essential fatty acid termed the arachidonic acid. Arachidonic acid is chemically termed as icosa tetraenoic acid since it has 20 carbon molecules having 4 double bonds. This arachidonic acid can now undergo two cycles, cyclooxygenase and the other is the lipooxygenase pathway. Talking about the cyclooxygenase pathway, the cyclooxygenase enzyme exists in two isoforms, COX-2 and COX-1. The cyclooxygenase 2 is a luxury enzyme and COX-1 is a housekeeping enzyme. Now, the prostanoic acid will soon collapse to form the prostaglandin G. This prostaglandin G will now further convert into prostaglandin H also termed as PGH. Till now we have seen the common pathways and now Vivid categories of prostaglandins can be formed. For instance, the prostacycline, also termed as PGI2. Apart from these, there can be prostaglandin D, which is PGD, PGE, and the PGF. And finally, the last prostaglandin termed as the thromboxane, also termed as thromboxane A2 or TXA2. Moving on to the lipoxygenase pathway, the arachidonic acid is converted into hydroperoxy icosa tetraenoic acid. Slightly complex, but we'll get through it. Now, this HPETE can be acted upon by two vivid enzymes. The first one is 5' lipoxygenase. This 5' lipoxygenase converts the HPETE into leukotrienes. The first one is leukotriene A4, which further collapses into leukotriene C4, D4, and E4. Leukotriene A4 can also convert into leukotriene B4, but it will end there. The second pathway is by the HPETE is acted upon by the 12' prime lipoxygenase, which converts it into lipoxins, specifically lipoxins A4 and B4.